Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. As President of the United States, I am mindful of the dangers that we face. They cross my desk every morning. I lead the strongest military that the world has ever known. Well, he's almost right. He means he misleads. Misleads. There's one little piece missing. I mislead the strongest military the world has ever known. He has purged the military. Joseph Stalin executed his generals in the 1940s out of fear they were plotting a coup against him, which they were not. And as a result, the Soviet military was unable to operate effectively. Similarly, other dictators have purged the military in paranoid fits. Today, we are witnessing a similar purge, carried out not with bullets, but with smears, innuendo, and spurious legal charges. But it is a purge of senior military officers nevertheless. This chapter, Zero Military, in my prescient book, Government Zero, is a must read. And I'm not going to read it to you today. I'm going to hold my fire until publication day on October 27th. But I actually named the generals that Barry has purged in order to foster the progressive Islamist takeover of the United States of America and the world. They have names. The administration has continued right off from where my last book left off. He has eliminated one seasoned combat leader after another with smears and innuendos. He has demilitarized our military. It's all part of the progressive Islamic takeover of America, attacking at the core. Another wrinkle in the ongoing purge and reconstruction of the military. The Obama administration continues its quest to transform the military from an institution of patriotic warriors, largely inspired by Christian principles, into an atheist, multicultural, progressive bureaucracy. All in government zero. My heart is beating with sadness to see what's happened to this country and this military under this radical extremist in the White House. But today the bear he thought he put to sleep suddenly clawed its way back onto the world stage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Reflect a genuine commitment to defeat that organization then we are prepared to welcome those efforts and to find a way to deconflict our operations uh, the new word and thereby the day, multiply the military pressure. The girls came up with a new word. The word du jour is deconflict, a word no one ever heard of before. One of these idiot bureaucrats from one of the colleges, one of America's stupidest universities, came up with a new word, deconflict. Go ahead, keep talking, jo John. Keep rattling off. Keep rattling off. Keep it running. You don't have to... And those... Yeah. Now Doesn't matter where you stop it. reflect a genuine commitment to defeat yeah. that organization, the then we are prepared now. to welcome those efforts and to find a way to deconflict our operations and thereby multiply the military pressure on ISIL and affiliated groups. You're a liar. But we You've must been a not. Liar. Okay, and we'll you get the you get the drift. John Kerry is an empty suit and a liar from the, from the get go. Going back to the Vietnam War, he's been a liar and a an empty suit. That's how he got where he is. As you well know, the worst rise to the highest levels uh, in our government. The worst people rise to the highest positions of power. And they get there by lying their way to the top, not by doing anything noble. So I ask you, the American people, what do you think? you got SU-34 fullback bombers, and they're, and they're bombing. And um, I'll have to take the words of those people who are on the ground, not me, I'm not there, that they're not actually bombing uh, ISIS targets today. They're not yet bombing Islamic State targets. So who are they bombing? Well, they're bombing the opposing forces to their national interests. First, they're clearing the way. Before they go after ISIS, they're taking out the so-called free Syrian forces. Uh, Obama's fantasy. You know, the good ones. The, the, the young people. Those in the dungarees with iPhones in their back pockets that we saw in Egypt who really were the advance guard for the Muslim Brotherhood. You know, the young, whenever they're young, they're good. You know, young people in dungarees are all good because they, they wear tight pants. So we're going to take out this free Syrian army, or Russia is rather, take them out first. You see, it's called a military strategy, something that Barbara Starr and the other girls 
who are way past their prime could not figure out. You don't go after your primary target immediately. What you do is you do it in a strategic manner, step by step, stage by stage. So first they're taking out, the Russians are taking out the Free Syrian Army to get them out of the way because they oppose Russia. The Free Syrian Army is a threat to Russian troops on the ground, which will be there as sure as I'm standing here. And they want to make sure they're gone first before they go in and start killing the ISIS maniacs. So you say, well, they're not bombing ISIS. No, of course they're not bombing ISIS now. All tittering. Oh, they're not bombing ISIS. They're bombing for the good guys. Well, not to them. They're not the good guys. Their ultimate target is to take out ISIS. First, they got to take out the Free Syrian Army. The Al-Nusra Front, which we used to call a terrorist group, by the way, until Barry changed the definition again uh, with Marie Hoff sitting over a, a late night coffee or something. You know, what we have for you, though, is something from 1984, Ronald Reagan, where he ran. This is an ad for Ronald Reagan in 1984. Uh, don't play it yet. Where Russia was seen as the, the greatest enemy to uh, Western civilization. And the whole object of the Reagan administration was to bring down the Soviet Union, and they succeeded in doing that. What's amazing to me, though, is that many of his acolytes, many of the people who were stuck in bureaucracies working for Reagan, are still continuing the rhetoric of the 1980s, still continuing as Reagan cold warriors, even though the whole world has changed. No, Russia is not the greatest threat to world stability right now. It's the radical Islamists. They are the greatest threat to the world right now. And our greatest ally in stopping the Islamists is none other than Russia. And yet these people, these Reaganites, are so embedded in the media and in government that they continue to mouth the same rhetoric from the 1980s. Russia, 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 no good. Russia, no good. They're still mouthing what they were taught in the 1980s when the world has moved on and they're stuck in the past. They're like animals who fell into an amber pit. No, the greatest threat to world stability is not Russia. It's radical Islam. And that's what this bombing in Syria is all about. Yes, they're propping up a dictator named Assad. Oh, they are. But he's the best bulwark they have against the Islamists who would take over if they managed to knock Assad out. You're telling me that what we did in Libya made sense to kill Gaddafi? Oh, he was another mad dictator, wasn't he? Hillary Clinton cackled when she killed him. Don't you remember that? Oh, those distant days, Benghazi, it's actually in Libya. Yeah, that's been forgotten already. That's been forgotten like bringing down Obamacare. But it was Hillary Clinton who cackled after they killed Gaddafi. We came, we saw, we and he died. And the girls laughed, the sorority laughed. Because George Soros had his way. The devil himself was the funding behind all of that. On the uh, a premise, the premise now, that if you throw overthrow a dictator, all the young people with tight dungarees and iPhones in their back pockets, all of the people who go to the discotheques will rise up and create a new, a new world, a new world in Libya. No, it didn't happen that way. Who took over? Worse elements than Gaddafi. Libya has fallen into chaos. The weapons were smuggled to ISIS directly from Libya into Syria. A direct run. And it wasn't even an underground railroad that brought the weapons from uh, Gaddafi's weapons hordes. It wasn't even an underground railroad. It was an open railroad run by the CIA right into Syria to supply weapons to the so-called free Syrian forces and to, you guessed it, ISIS itself who are using M16s manufactured in the United States of America. And so, naturally, Putin is threatened by them. He does not want an Islamic presence in Syria. Let's be very clear. He'd rather have a Stalinist present in Syria in the form of Assad. He'd rather have a useful puppet, ally, whatever you want to call him, someone who's not a Muslim extremist, who is Assad, rather than a madman wearing some holy robe, quoting the Quran as he rapes and kills his way across the Middle East. So in the long run, this Russian uh, incursion into Syria, I believe will be a stabilizing force, a stabilizing act at, at the end of the day, and something that is better for the world rather than is worse 
as uh, the New York Times and the others are are opposing it. They have bent over backwards to make this thin man in the White House look like he knows what he's doing when he doesn't. His entire, quote, strategy has blown up in his face today. The phone number here is 855-407-282, but you cannot get on the show because the lines are so hot right now with America wanting to speak not only to Michael Savage, but to other Americans on this single question, which is, do you support or oppose today's airstrikes by Russia? And before we take your calls, let's go to the 1984 Reagan ad on the bear. Listen to it. There is a bear in the woods. For some people, the bear is easy to see. Others don't see it at all. Some people say the bear is tame. Others say it's vicious and dangerous. Since no one can really be sure who's right, isn't it smart to be as strong as the bear? If there is a bear. That was the height of the Cold War where Russia was seen as the worst enemy on the planet. And at the time, Russia was a distinct threat to world stability. People were living horrendous lives in the Soviet Union. And many of them have fled to uh, many Western nations, including the United States. And many of them are listeners to this show. And they came for a better life. And what they see emerging in this country is exactly what went on in the, in the Soviet Union under Stalin. And then under the others who followed Stalin. They see it. They hear it. They smell it. They taste it. And they know it. And they know that it's Barry from Honolulu, who is the greatest threat to world stability today, not Vladimir Putin. So do you oppose or do you support today's airstrikes? WBAP, Mike, go ahead. You're up. You're the first one. What's your position? Although I'm happy for anyone to destroy ISIS and send them back to Hades, where they came from, I, in the American national interest, I have to be very, uh, you know, concerned about Russia and China getting a big, fat toehold in the Middle East. Uh, this, this can't be good long term. This is surely going to... Uh, cause a conflict, you know, that word de-conflict, de-conflict, whatever, that's a riot. But isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't that riotous? They came up with a new word today? How did they invent that word, de-conflict, in one day? Who made that up for them? And all they do is cause conflict. Everything they do causes a conflict, and he wants to come up and act like he wants to de-conflict something? Yeah, Everything. well, he's actually the, anta he's the antagonist over there. Now, who was the antagonist, Putin or Obama? Um, wow, that's hard to say. Putin is just doing what he can get away with, and I believe something is going on in the world. America is involved that wants to get rid of secular-type leaders in the Middle East. Uh, I think any ultra-religionist, they're kind of wanting those people in power they don't care Sunni, Shia, whatever. But it's Why does B Barry Obama want radical Muslims running countries rather than secularists? Why does he have such a soft spot for radical Islam, which he does? He won't even use the words together. You hit the nail on the head. He'd rather have a radical Islamist running Syria than a Stalinist. Why? They want the secularists out of there because they're, I guess they can't be manipulated religiously or something. Uh, but look, uh, look. Well, you see, you don't want to go where your mind is taking you. You don't want to actually say what you know to be true in your heart of hearts. And I'll put another fact on the table before I make my position clear. Do you know that there are Christian refugees from Syria who are about to be kicked out of the United States? Christians who fled ISIS are sitting here in the United States on U.S. soil, and Barry Obama has denied them asylum while bringing in hundreds of thousands of Muslims from Syria. Doesn't that tell you everything you need to know? Well, I mean, you're, you're, you're stunned. Iraqi Christians have been denied asylum in the United States. They're facing expulsion. They're sitting here in this country. They're known as Chaldeans some of the, the uh, most ancient of all Christian groups. They've been held at the Ote Detention Center in San Diego since entering the United States in April and May. And do you know what your government is doing to them? Throwing them out of the country. And what is your government doing concurrent with throwing Christians from Iraq out when they're the most persecuted minority in the Middle East? Why are they not being given asylum? 
And why are Muslims from Syria being given asylum? Because